Welcome there everyone, I would like to show you how to use the camera on the Google Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. So let's open up the camera app itself. And so you have camera here. So it's going to give you the option to switch the camera lenses. So on the Google Pixel 6, we only have two lenses, the regular lens and then the ultra wide. So when we tap on 0.7 here, it's going to switch to the ultra wide. When we tap on the one, it's going to switch to the regular camera. And when we tap on two, it's actually doing a digital zoom. Now on Google Pixel 6 Pro, there is a telephoto camera, which means when you tap on the two, uh, it's actually going to switch the camera lens to the telephoto, meaning you'll get better quality. Now from here, you have the flip. So that will just flip the camera, okay? So you can see, I mean, it's gonna be using the front camera right here. Flip it back, and there we go. Then you have this button here, and this button is where the preview for your photos will be saved. So if I just quickly take a photo, by tapping on this, and I tap into this, you can see that is a quick view of your latest photo or video. Now you have this little uh, icon here, this arrow, tap on the arrow, and now you have a bunch of options to play with. So you see here, motion photos, these are live photos on the iPhone if you've ever heard of that. What it will do is it will take a picture and then it will also record a short video for like two to three seconds with audio and you can look at the photo or the video at the same time. You have the timer. So if you select this and then you take a picture, there'll be a timer. Once the timer ends, then it'll actually uh, 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 snap the picture. And then you have the ratio here. So you have the wide crop 16 by nine and then the full image four by three. Then you have here night sight. Uh, by default, this is set to automatic. So what does this do? Well. When there is low light conditions, it will use the night sight feature, which means it will take longer to take a photo, but you'll get better low light images. You can also tap on the flash, and then that will enable the flash. Take a picture. Let's do the picture. You can see you use the flash to take the picture. If you want both of those options turned off, you can always just select none. Then you have more settings. These are the advanced settings. So you see save location, what this will do is in the photo itself, it will have the location of where you're taking it. So it won't show on the screen, but when you take a photo in the file information, okay, so you, you'll need to be advanced to know where to find that, uh, it will have the location saved. Camera sounds, when you heard me, you know, taking a picture, making noise, uh, so that is what camera sounds are. Google Lens suggestions. So if you point at, let's say, some text, and let's say it's in a foreign language, it will automatically Google Translate, or if you have a QR code you want to scan, or scan it automatically, stuff like that, so you can have that one on or off. Then you have the social share, so if you want to share the image, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the photos, you can select, uh, first of all, if you want social share on, and then the uh, options here, messages, YouTube, uh, the more apps you have, the more options you'll have available. Then you have the gestures itself. So by default, when you click on the volume buttons, okay, so volume up or down, which are these ones, with my fingers on, it will actually take a picture, okay? So click it, boom. But if we tap on this, you can change it so that the volume keys will do zoom. The volume keys will change the volume like it will do by default. We can change it so in the camera app, the volume keys will do nothing. So it's up to you. You also have frequent faces. So what this will do, is it will recommend shots that prioritize the people you photograph most. So if you wanna have that on, you can have that on. I personally keep it off. Now you have device storage. So uh, here is the deal. You can see storage saver. So what this will do is by default, images taken are in lossless format. So what lossless means is you have no quality lost when taking the photos, it'll be the highest quality possible. When you turn on storage saver, the photo quality will be slightly reduced, but the file size will also be reduced. Now, being blunt here, this is not a big issue if you don't plan on editing your photos. Okay, the main reason why is because, you know, the photos, they still look decent. But when you're editing photos, you're trying to manipulate all of the information in the photo itself. And so, if you have the, the uh, information lost because you're saving file size, well then guess what? Uh, it's gonna be harder to do so. So whether or not you wanna turn that on, that's up to you. It also says here, turn off when storage is available. So when you have at least one gig of storage available, then it will also turn uh, uh, that on as well. 
And you have, have here the free up space option. So this will just take you to the files app and you can find any old files which are on your device, like download, stuff like that, which you can delete. Then you have advanced here. So you have show dirty lens warning. So if your back cameras are dirty, it'll give you a warning to clean them. You have RAW plus JPEG control. So this will give you the highest quality photos, but the file size will be very large. Then you have a store videos efficiency, uh, efficiently even. So here is the deal. When you do this, you're going to be using a different uh, codec. So what is a codec? What is how the photos, all the videos are encoded. How, what, what does that mean? Well, when the camera is taking a photo, it's using the lens, it's getting this analog signal, which is all the uh, lights and all the data, and it's converting that into a digital image, which you see. And the codec is, you know, the algorithm, which does that. Well, it's an algorithm, the steps it takes, okay? So when you're using H.265 slash HEVC, codec for videos, then keep in mind what this means is you may not be able to play this on your Windows computer, the video file, you may not be able to play it on some devices. Now, Apple devices do support this HEVC format, but uh, if you, you know, are unsure, you're using other devices, just do a test, see if the other devices can watch the videos or not. If they can't, turn this one off, otherwise you should uh, keep it on. Then you have here social media depth features, so it will save the data for depth, so you know the foreground and the background uh, data will be saved. And then enable time lapse for astrophotography. So if you would like to, you know, do uh, a picture where you put the pixel on a tripod in the sky, uh, you can have this option on, and that will allow you to do that. Then you have composition, so framing hints. It will give you. I mean, just tips, okay? So, you know, when you're taking a picture, let's say there's someone in the background, it will just say, you know, to move, stuff like that. If you're not in focus, it'll give you warnings. Then you have the grid. So let's just turn on the grid for the sake of it, so I can show you here. So that is the grid, okay? Just give you little outlines, boom. Uh, you can have that one on, or you can have it off. So uh, me personally, I don't think you really need it on. Then you have camera photo resolution. So full resolution, is well it's going to use more file size medium resolution it's still 1080p so it's still decent image quality but i recommend you just have the highest resolution possible and then save selfie as previewed you can have that on whatever much you would like uh, let's go here video stabilization so video stabilization will make the phone more hot while you're recording video it's not not a big deal but you can have that one on or off Audio zoom, this is, I don't know why this is on by default. So let me show you this. If I go to video and I start a video, uh, by default, when you're one time zoom, the video recorded will have the regular audio. Okay, so when I'm speaking, you can hear me right now. But when I set to two time zoom, imagine you're recording something and it's further away, okay? It will actually, it will just lower the audio sound it's so like, imagine I zoom in on this camera, and as I zoom in, okay, this camera here, my audio goes quieter, you know? It's not something you wanna have on. Try it out, I recommend you turn off the uh, audio zoom, because all it means is when you zoom in, you're more quiet, and I think personally, that isn't a great feature, so I recommend you turn this one off. So from here, we've configured the photo, we configured the video, let's take some videos. So you can see here, in the video tab, when to change tabs, you just tap on the toggle you want to choose. Okay, boom, boom. Uh, we have the video tab. You can change the uh, stabilization options here. So you have standard, locked, active, cinematic pan. You can change between these two. And if you tap this icon here, you have the flash option, the resolution, and the frames per second. So flash, whether or not you want the flash on or off, you can choose that. Resolution, so 4K is the highest quality. Uh, you know, I recommend you record in 4K because again, it's the highest quality, but it will use more file, uh, you know, uh, storage space, okay? Frames per second, the so 60 FPS will give you the smoothest video. 30 FPS will give you less smooth video. You can see in the preview, looks a bit laggy. It's really up to you what you do choose. 60 FPS, of course, will use more file size as well. Uh, if you tap on more settings, you'll see the same advanced settings I went through earlier. Uh, so I'm not going to go through that one again. You also have the flip option here. 
Now keep in mind the front camera is different from the back, so you can tap on this toggle. And you're going to notice here we don't have the quality options, we don't have the frame rate options, because it's going to lock those, okay? You have selfie illumination, so what this will do is you can see it adds these white bars here, which will be max uh, brightness to illuminate your face if you would like to have that. And of course you can change between the lenses, but again, on regular Pixel 6, this is going to be digital zoom. You have the uh, Pixel 6 Pro, will actually uh, change the camera itself. Now let's go to portrait mode. So portrait mode is going to get a foreground and then it's going to, um, you know, add a background blur like it's a DSLR camera. So if I just take this here, take a look at the background blur, like see my middle finger moving, okay? Look at that background blur. If I go to the regular camera, to be honest, it's kind of the same, but uh, this, this will be better to show my front face. So if I move this to the side, look at the background blur, okay? The regular camera, it's hard to tell, but it just removes the background blur uh, on your photos, make them look better. Uh, so if I tap here, you can have the same options for portrait mode, uh, to customize it as the regular camera. Then you have night sight. So what this does is it'll give you like really high quality images uh, in low light. You really, you just need to have your phone steady. Best results will be on the tripod. And then you just start the shot. And depending on how much, uh, you know, light there is, it may take like 30 seconds, one minute, so, something like that. And it'll take a high quality shot. And then we have modes. So these are the advanced modes. So you have panorama, if you would like. So you start. And then you just move the phone across, make sure you, you're stable. You see the frame here, make sure the frame is like a rectangle that's straight, upright. You can tilt your phone up and down, and you can see, you just want to make sure that you match those white lines, and you can go across, okay? It will give you a, an assistance. Uh, stop when you're ready, boom. Uh, let's go back, let's go to modes. And then you have photosphere, so it just gives you a sphere view, so let's start the uh, photo here, and you just move the phone around, and it'll give you like a really, you know, a sphere shot, I guess you could say. I'm personally not interested in that, but if you want to, then that's what that does. Let's go back, modes, and you have lenses. So what this does is, let's open, or using the app, allow so we'll add these permissions what this will do is you do need internet so if you look at like a monument or or uh, object it will use you know, ai to find out what that object actually is so let's say i have this iphone here and i would pull it in the lens it would say this is iphone 6 and it give me a web page uh, to view that but keep in mind you do need connection and i do not have connection you can also do the same with text translate all that good stuff so that's how to use the camera app. And with that being said, thanks for watching. See you guys later. Bye-bye.